This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about Bitcoin and the wall of money that is about to enter Bitcoin. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So there is a wall of money, mostly institutional money, that is headed for Bitcoin. And I'm, I'm not sure that a lot of people still realize the magnitude of this or how it works. Now, I'm taking this phrase, the wall of money is coming from Raul Paul, who has said that he, ha he now has approximately 98% of his liquid net worth in Bitcoin. Very smart, very wealthy guy. But what, what he's talking about, what I'm talking about when we talk about this wall of money coming is that institutional investors are fairly slow moving. They need to get permission. They first need to decide that they're, they're gonna do something, then they need to get permission. They need to do various filings with the SEC to get exemptions or approvals, and then, or whatever country they're in, whatever the regulatory agencies, and then they can move ahead. So here's a perfect example of a private German bank that's gonna be launching a cryptocurrency fund. The fund will be buying Bitcoin, ETH, Stellar, Etc. It's going to hold a number of cryptocurrencies. They'll probably do it on a market cap weighted basis, which means the bulk of their allocation will be going into Bitcoin. But this is how this works. This is uh, we know this money is coming. It will be launched, but they will not be able to start trading until January of 2021. So here's an example of a huge buyer who is coming. We know they're coming. They can't do anything until January 1st. But this is money that will be going into. Uh, Bitcoin, probably hundreds of millions of dollars. It's just one example. Here's another example from Dan uh, Dan Tapiero about Allianz Bernstein, which is a, a Wall Street research house changing their view on Bitcoin. They used to be against Bitcoin, and now they're saying that people should have a one and a half to ten percent allocation uh, to Bitcoin. And so again, as this gets rolled out to all the private wealth advisors, etc. You have, this would mostly be probably high net worth individuals uh, and maybe some hedge funds buying Bitcoin. Another uh, Wall Street brokerage firm and research firm, BTIG, says that cryptocurrency is here to stay. They're putting a $50,000 target on Bitcoin for 2021. Right now it's trading about 19,000. I think it should easily hit 100,000, but this is just another research house that used to be against Bitcoin and is now in favor of Bitcoin. So this is, I think this is a helpful chart showing where various people uh, said they were long Bitcoin. Uh, Jim Cramer talking about Bitcoin back in September, PayPal making their announcement that they would allow clients to um, accumulate cryptocurrency. Uh, Stan Druckenmiller, famous hedge fund investor, Cramer, BlackRock, Bernstein, BTIG, Guggenheim. We've talked about a lot of these. This is the, uh, the uh, basically Wall Street coming on board with Bitcoin, someone did a parody of this that I thought was pretty pretty clever, showing that uh, that previous chart is down here, Bernstein and Guggenheim. Next, we have uh, really RIA firms and asset management firms beginning to get into Bitcoin. That's when it really goes parabol parabolic. Uh, Merrill Lynch, Bank of America, Calpers, and then I think this is pretty funny at the top. Jay Z, Jay Z at the top, and then Peter Schiff capitulating even higher up. This is what's amazing about Bitcoin, even after it's gone up so much, it's still had, there's still so many bears. There's so many people who have yet to capitulate. And some of them probably never will just due to their age and their demographics. I like to call them the three amigos. We have Peter Schiff, who's been bearish on Bitcoin since it was $10. We have Nuriel Rubini, who did predict a housing crash once and has been wrong about almost everything since that bearish on Bitcoin the entire way up. And Paul Krugman, of course, when you're a Keynesian, of course, you don't understand store value or anything like Bitcoin. Also massively bearish on Bitcoin the whole way up. This is the amazing thing about these three people. No matter how high Bitcoin goes, they're still bearish. And Peter Schiff here is actually arguing that Bitcoin going up is a bearish thing and will assure its failure. Not sure how that works. And shame on these people for not paying attention to what's actually happening, the flows that are happening and the flows that, can, that, that basically confirm the fundamentals of Bitcoin as a store of value, as a hedge against central bank money printing. 
this was a great tweet talking about uh, how you really need to look at Bitcoin as a logarithmic chart that the part where we are here is going, to, is going to end up looking like this once Bitcoin goes up into the hundred thousands and the millions. A lot of people asking me whether the whales, Bitcoin whales, have been moving their coins onto exchanges to sell. There has been some evidence of long-term holders selling, but what we're actually seeing, the bulk of what's happening is that we're seeing coins, continue, Bitcoin continually being, um, being drawn down being taken off the exchanges, presumably to be put onto into uh, cold storage. And so this the uh, the gray line is the price of Bitcoin. The yellow line, yellow orange line is the uh, number of Bitcoin currently held on exchanges. During the, the previous bull market, we can see that the amount of coins, Bitcoin being held at the exchanges continued to go up. This time, Bitcoin is really functioning more like a store of value. These are people, these are probably uh, hodlers, high net worth individuals, and also institutional investors who are buying Bitcoin for the long haul. If you're pulling your coins off an exchange, it is because you're putting it in cold storage and it means you have no intention of selling anytime soon. So I think this is quite bullish as well. What this means is that we continue to see exchange shortages of Bitcoin. And in classic supply and demand fashion, the only way to make up for a Bitcoin shortage is for much higher prices to appear, which will draw Bitcoin out of the um, out of the uh, woodwork. And I think people mis misunderstand how few Bitcoin there actually are, how many have been lost, how many are locked up in cold storage and uh, locked up by hodlers, and we continue to see them being drawn down on the exchanges. So I think that's quite bullish when you have this institutional wall of money coming and you have a shortage of Bitcoin that is fundamentally uh, caused by the halving, which we saw in May of 2020. Now the Bitcoin miners are producing only half as many Bitcoin per day as they were before the halving. And we have big funds like GBTC, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, we have PayPal, etc., buying more Bitcoin every day than are being produced by the miners. So this is a fundamental mismatch between supply and demand. This is going to be the biggest driver of Bitcoin's price in 2021. For those of you who think you're too late, we can see that Michael Saylor over at MicroStrategy, which is a publicly traded NASDAQ company we've talked about a lot, they continue to move their cash as they earn it into Bitcoin. If you think you're too late to Bitcoin, he's still buying Bitcoin. This is another $50 million worth of Bitcoin that he bought and paid an average price of 19427 He said he's going to hold this for 10 years. He's looking at 10 years at least for the company and that he's looking at uh, targets in the hundred thousands or the millions. So we're definitely still very, very early in this game. And one of the things about securities or assets that go up a lot in price, they keep hitting new highs and they look expensive the whole time. Apple and Amazon have always looked expensive and they've always been expensive, but you want to buy charts that look like this, that start in the lower left-hand corner and go up to the upper right-hand corner. Michael Saylor obviously still likes Bitcoin in the 19,000s. I like this uh, tweet from Willy Wu where he, where he points out that the adoption curve of Bitcoin is actually faster than any other, th any other adoption curve that we've seen in modern history. I'll link to this because it's a little bit difficult to see. A uh, number of internet users is this purple dotted line here. Mobile accounts is this gray line. Bitcoin here, Bitcoin on-chain usage is this green line. And Bitcoin exchange usage is this purple line. Obviously, Bitcoin uh, piggybacking on traditional uh, infrastructure piggybacking on the internet. It wouldn't be possible to have Bitcoin without the internet. So it makes sense once you have the infrastructure in place that software on top of it can grow very quickly. But this is still startling to see how early we are, how steep the Bitcoin adoption curve is. We can see it looks like it's leveling off a little bit for on-chain usage, even as it stays very steep for people buying it using exchanges. We can see how much steeper this exchange line is here versus anything that we've seen, uh, this purple line here uh, on the internet. So very early on, still in the adoption curve, 
and growing at a much steeper rate than we've ever seen before for any technology in history. Still getting a lot of emails and texts and messages from people saying that the US government is gonna ban Bitcoin. These are people who just aren't paying attention. Again, here's Brian Brooks, uh, Office of the uh, Comptroller of the Currency, talking on CNBC about, he actually said, nobody is going to ban Bitcoin. We're very focused on not killing this. So this is what the regulators are saying. If someone is just spreading fear, talking about how Bitcoin is going to be banned, it may be banned uh, eventually when it's in the millions and it's a real threat. But at these levels, it uh, continues to spread throughout the financial system. They're not going to ban Bitcoin at the same time that very big Wall Street firms are moving into Bitcoin. That's just not how the game works. Finally, wanted to end with something that's just hugely significant, and I'm not sure people uh, paid enough attention to this. The S&P, the S&P Dow Jones indices are now launching a crypto index that's going to appear in 2021. It's like that German private bank fund, crypto fund we were just talking about. It will almost certainly be market cap weighted, which means that the largest market cap currency, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, will receive the largest weighting. And what this means is that once you have indices, you can then have tracking of those indices either through mutual funds or through other vehicles. Ultimately, there will be a Bitcoin ETF and an increasing number of cryptocurrency ETFs that will track uh, these various crypto indices. S&P 500, S&P uh, Index Group, for those of you who don't know, obviously, uh, runs and maintains the S&P 500 index, decides on the components for that. And so this is, this is not just some mom and pop group putting this out. This is the index group uh, releasing a crypto index next year. So what comes first is the crypto index, and then comes the indexers, the passive indexers, the people who follow the index, and they buy whatever is in the index. Again, if we take a look, the really big things in the index are Bitcoin, and then ETH is just an order of magnitude below that. So the bulk of the money will continue to flow into Bitcoin as these indices come out. And then eventually what we will see, as I alluded to, is a Bitcoin ETF. This was really a huge thing for gold in March of 2003 when GLD came out, the first actual gold-backed uh, ETF in the U.S. People can now buy GBTC, which is a little bit like a Bitcoin ETF, but it trades at a large premium. It charges a very high annual management fee. So once people have access to a much lower, uh, lower cost ETF like GLD for gold, there'll be something called probably BTC, if we're lucky, for the Bitcoin ETF. And this will be another source of just massive Bitcoin demand. So we have Bitcoin demand coming from the institutional side, groups, uh, private banks, Wall Street groups launching funds to invest in cryptocurrencies heavily weighted toward Bitcoin. And then ultimately, we will have a Bitcoin ETF almost certainly in the next six to 18 months. And once we have a Bitcoin ETF, you'll have all the RIAs, the registered investment advisors, advising their clients to put one to 5% into this Bitcoin ETF. The Bitcoin ETF will then be forced to buy real Bitcoin and put it into cold storage, taking it off the market. So this really is the wall of money that is coming. It's not priced in. People know that it's coming. People are paying close attention to this space. The Three Amigos, obviously, not paying any attention to this and will be uh, will be missing out on this. But for those of you who are paying attention, we can see this money coming. We know that a lot of it cannot be allocated until January 1st, 2021. But when that money comes in, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin spike just from December 31st to January 1st. And uh, as that money can start to flow in, uh, in the new year. And when you when the Bitcoin ETF is finally approved, when we wake up and see this, Bitcoin will be gapping up five or ten percent, almost certainly overnight, when something like this comes out, unless there's some advance notice and people begin to sort of front run it. But either way, it's hard for me to envision how Bitcoin cannot be much much higher, with supply shrinking being taken off the exchanges, and this huge wall of new money coming into Bitcoin. 
uh, beginning in 2021. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comments section below, especially what you'd like me to see, like to see me make my next YouTube video about. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.